Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. Before there were cordless impact wrenches, there were corded electric impacts. And before those, there were pneumatic air-powered impacts still used today. And then before those, there were handheld bolt busters like this handheld tool to switch, a manual driven impact wrench. A lot of you enjoyed us breaking down and testing. But what many of you asked, the true impact wrench that predates all of that, the impact wrench that is a wrench that you impact like with a hammer the original original cordless impact if you will your right arm before the days of pull trigger and lever spring actuated machines there was good old-fashioned mass meets acceleration on everything from ship rigging farm equipment and machinery to simple repairs around the homestead if it ain't broken time to fix that sort of mentality hit it until something moves this is a slug wrench, also commonly referred to as a striking wrench, hammering wrench, hammer wrench, even a slugging spanner. It's the mullet of the wrench world, all business up front and party section out in the back. So today we're gonna take a look at a few different styles, different price points, and what about just lopping off one of your own combo wrenches? How does that compare? And basically just see what kind of torque you can make sort of in general with these. Using three different increasing in size hammers, one is your usual one pound 16 ounce ball peen and increasing in size from there. So let's get into it. This is the Uxel Striker Wrench we bought for $23. We're gonna call this like a standard, your short type, the most common type I've seen before at least. Now considering you're not instead using an extremely long lever to turn whatever you're trying to turn, going to assume you don't have all the room in the world, so a short model has some upsize. This is gonna get about 35 wax from the hammer, at which point, it's making very little progress after that. And we're up to 337 foot pounds, not bad. We also use this as an opportunity to patronize our local hardware store, buy some hammers with pound ratings displayed on their heads so you can see them at home. And well, yeah, because how do you waste an opportunity to pick up some big problem solvers in the name of science? We got a four pound engineering hammer. I call these one handed sledges, but you could of course use two hands if you like, and a 10 pound wrecking hammer or demolition sledge that looks like something a mythical dwarf would wield, but basically looking for a broad face to land easily on each of these wrenches. Now it's important with something like this and really anything you're gonna be hitting steel with, you don't always know how hardened these are gonna be. And the chrome wrench we know is gonna be quite hard, so you'll want to avoid any framing or claw type hammer that are designed for hitting soft nail heads, wood, things like that. You want a rounded head hammer traditionally intended for metalwork. All right, let's give this a go with the four pound sledge. With these, you'll have to sort of work out how it likes to get hit. They all want to jump off, so you're going to have to navigate where on the tool and from what angle is best to approach it from. We went from 35 hits with that last hammer, now 25 hits with this one, up to just at 600 foot pounds. A pretty large increase, and I say 25 hits, but it's about 25 hits, partial hits, and this thing popping off instantly are not gonna be counted. And now up to the wrecking sledge, we're gonna go from 35 down to 25 and now 15 hits. Now this whole apparatus is clamped to hell in an old school USA made vice then dual chain down to the workbench that's bolted into the concrete with one inch all thread bolts. So it's about as rigid as things are realistically gonna get. That said, I'm no lumberjack or firefighter, so maybe one of those could do better. These are all just a single person's attempts to get a damn bolt to turn for comparison's sake. We're well outside the white glove laboratory today, folks. The standard short type striker wrench is gonna be persuaded up to 697 foot pounds, about 700 foot pounds, less of a jump, from a four pound to a 10 pound hammer than I would have guessed. Okay, and from the same brand, we have an offset design of that same sort of principle for $24. So this gets you and the hammer swing away from whatever it's bolted together with. With having hammered on these things all day, I can say it is a good idea in principle to move that away from what you're swinging. It's also longer. Now I'm no math wizard, but longer lever on a wrench hitting further away, same hammer force. Seems like it would make for some extra turny turny action and I'd be right, mostly. With the same 35 some odd blows of the hammer, the bolt is turned up to 380 foot pounds now and progress slows quite a bit after the 30 plus hammer blow mark. Percentage wise, that's a pretty good amount extra sauce. 
and no more damage done than usual. With the four pound hammer, a few things become more clear. One, the wrench end is not as fat as the standard version and being a bit rounded, that adds up to make it harder to hit square on with. The offset design also makes it want to walk off the bolt head a bit more easily as well. All told, we're up to just 538 by the time we're done with the four pounder. A lot of those differences should be solved though by the big 10 pound whacker with this massive flat hammer face. But gonna be not so much in this case looking at the data despite it feeling like it is getting some solid hits in there. What we're dealing with here are massive levels of dynamic torque, the amount of force imparted per blow. That requires a very rigid body to transmit efficiently and I think this skinny longer arm is happy with smaller hits, even using that lever length to do more work, but when those hits are much bigger, it's flexing a bit or just not transferring all that as instantly, we still see lower numbers. Now you might be thinking, but these are budging stuff free, not just turning stuff in reverse. Well, we gave that a shot, sure, including with this guy. This is the Harfington Striking Wrench. It's sort of a mixture of the last two long arm, but with some chunk on the end and a block so you can hit it solidly. And it's also six point, which I'm curious to see if that makes a difference. This was twice the price at 52 bucks. Let's see how it works. The most immediate difference is the wrench is gonna have less positions you can slot it onto the bolt head in. You have less options of where most conveniently to place the striking face. The coating on this is, instead of an oxide or phosphate coating like an impact socket, more like a rough powder coat, and chunks of it fly off, hit your face arms quite a bit when hitting it, it's sort of annoying. This makes it through 333 with the same number of hits, about the same as the standard wrench for whatever reason. When it comes to the four pound hammer, it's definitely one of the easiest to hit squarely. There's a large chunky spot for you to land your hits on, but the wrench still does want to fly off at times. And yeah, not picking your desired angle can be awkward at times with that six point. This did result in the second best so far, 500. And 69. Besides all the clear plastic coming off the hammer face on this ledge, they do that to prevent oxidation while it's just sitting around. The big boy hammer really liked this design and added the most amount of torque from the four pound to 10 pound hammer of any style. It's going to total 695 here, so about the same in all, but the biggest leap from the last one to this hammer. The six point design and the mass on the end seem to stay pretty planted with those big blows, and from what I can gather, does not flex all that much at all. So we're of course testing how high we can get this reverse threaded bolt up to for measuring purposes, but bolt breakaway is always gonna be a bit easier of a task or higher numbers, and the type of force on these, just large single hits compared to the many more smaller hits from a modern cordless impact wrench, we wanted to check if at 900 and 1000 loosening Removing this bolt head, we were missing the boat maybe, and these are just miles better than we've been giving them credit for. I wasn't able to, for example, make this 1,000 foot-pound mark budge even a little, just bouncing around a bit from pressure spikes, then settles back down. So altogether, so far, it would seem the swinch has that edge, in some cases, that manual impact wrench had a reason to be invented as it got up to those numbers. But what if you already have a wrench you're willing to sacrifice in order to get the job done now and not wait for when you ordered, or maybe a combination wrench of the size you need is cheaper or not available as a slugging wrench? We figured it would be worthwhile finding out if it could do the same job. So we cut down this long combination wrench and presto changeo, it's a homemade slug wrench now. It's a bit longer than a standard striking wrench model we bought, so it's not losing all of that length that we started with, though before cutting in half, did see if it could improve on some of the better results in its full length form, and this, at least in this size, is a bit clumsy to hit, though I've personally had luck on smaller size box end wrenches with this method when needed. It didn't oddly, in this case, pile on any additional torque from where we left off with a regular slug wrench, so it was worth cutting in half to find out. Let's see how it does. This makeshift slugging wrench is fairly easy to use with a one pound hammer, can recommend. The angle offset of the head, not returning to a straight relationship like the one we bought did, it's just coming off at a 15 degree angle. It makes it want to pop off more than normal, but does muster 342 foot pounds. Good stuff. It's when you get to heavier problem solvers that it introduces its own problem. It wants to fly off even more now but that's manageable, still gonna hit it with the same number of meaningful blows. Hopefully while the damage on the tool looks to be a lot less, the numbers it puts up are also less, and I think that's a mixture of two things. The arm is super thin, so you're not often getting a nice square on transfer hit 
with all the beans it deflects some and two the wrench measures for us at 46 to 47 hrc it's pretty hard sort of in the range where you'd expect a hand tool wrench but these this one measured 36 hrc and this one 37 and a half hrc you can hear the difference when this one hits the ground too the ringing twang it makes for abuse at this level, something softer may transmit those hits more like a dead blow with more turning and less vibrational recoil off of it. Anyhow, we get 552 with the same number of hits. It's noticeably less compared to the dedicated ones we purchased. We were also curious how an open end would do now that it's cut in half and we have it available. Maybe you're using it on something with even less access or a massive hydraulic line, something like that. This did at a level where the last attempt doesn't look so bad anymore. With the one pound hammer, we see less per swing and also the necessity to hold the tool on the fastener with your off hand. So you're not gonna be seeing the benefit of two handed swings. 267 foot pounds at this stage. And with the four pounder, this was slow going to try and get some decent hits without holding it in place with your other hand. And it also has that six point like effect of less positions you can place it on as well. Ultimately, 353 and the 38 millimeter open end is now measuring more like 39 millimeters. It's about as much as she's gonna do now. If nothing else, you at least have an idea of what kind of stuck you can unstick with a long open end and a hammer now. So is all the juice worth the squeeze? Well, there's no doubt that these had their place back in the day and they still do today in some certain situations. If something's covered in rust and just stuck instead of tight, sometimes big hammer blows can make that difference. But it's also clear whether it's the manual impact switch that came onto the scene in the 1950s and 60s or air impacts, which we've gotten to around 2,000 foot-pounds with one-inch drive and cordless near the same, even over 1,000 foot-pounds with half-inch drive cordless. These can accomplish the same thing with a lot less fuss. But it also seems like the slug wrench, designed as it is, has its advantages when this is the amount of space or access you have or a set of tools that you have on hand. Glad we were able to answer that burning question we and a lot of you had as well and put some numbers to it at the same time on the same dyno that we test a lot of the impacts that we test for a rough apples to apples comparison of each tool's capabilities. We make episodes like this every Friday. Tune in each week or click below if you want to see those. And thanks for watching.